Uh, welcome. This is uh, a project that I've started to um, interview top salespeople. Uh, that's uh, people who are consistently successful to try and draw out their secrets. And I'd like to start by introducing you to John Bycroft, who's on the call. Uh, John, I've known for more than 20 years. And uh, before I knew him, he was in IT originally, before getting a sales job with Olivetti. And then he started telling um, uh, branch automation systems to banks and building societies. And he was so successful at it that they had him start a, a global team to help all the other subsidiaries around the world achieve the same result. And, and then uh, af after some years later, he left Olivetti and, and uh, spearheaded and led several companies, had several adventures leading companies to success, and then came back to his roots about five years ago um, and came back to sales. And so now he's VP of sales EMEA, if I've got that right, John, for right. Uh, Comfort AG. Uh, it might sound, uh, I don't, you may not have heard of Comfort AG, but it is software being sold to banks still. So uh, um, welcome, John. Thanks for agreeing for, to do this interview. And, Thank you, uh, Good morning, everybody. I'll, um, I'll get straight into the questions. And uh, excuse me if I, if I read occasionally, just to make sure I say it how I want to say it. Um, so I'd like to understand what you attribute your sales success to. So tell me about the things that you do or did uh, that you consider had the most impact on your results. Looking for a fundamental, I think the important thing in sales is to be interested. And by that, I mean be genuinely interested in the situation that your prospect is in, the challenges that they face, the problems that they have, and really work as an analyst um, to come up with a solution which be best fits what they need. Now, obviously, the difference between being a pure analyst, as perhaps I was in my IT days, and being a salesperson is that hopefully the solution that you come up with is the one that you're selling. Otherwise, obviously, you won't be a very successful salesperson. So it is a combination of understanding your prospect's needs, the market needs, but also making sure that you as an individual are aligned with a company whose values, whose products, whose quality of delivery is something that you can ally yourself with and be confident in. And as you say, I've... Um, I've had a few um, companies um, over the years um, and one of the most successful ones that I had prior to returning, as you say, to the knitting and coming back to the banking market was an outsourced sales company. And one of the important things that I learned several times over is that there are companies out there whose product or service or whatever proposition is way in excess of their delivery capability and actually the only thing you can do in those circumstances as a salesperson is probably resign and move on if if you are in a position to meld to mold to change then that's something at a more senior level perhaps as an advisor or an independent, you can move the company to a position where they improve their proposition. But that's a very long-winded answer to the question. And I'd say the question is, be really interested in your prospect's situation and make sure that what you propose meets that situation, solves their problems, and does it in a qualitative and cost-effective way. Thank you, John. That's a very thorough answer. And, uh, I'm, going to, I'm going to try and push you a little bit further on it. I'm just going to say anything else, if there was a second thing. Um, I, I think um, if we've established that you're interested, you have to question and you have to really lift stones that perhaps other salespeople might not be tempted to lift. And in this way, you often impress the prospect with, with your thought process and where you're going. And again, it's it's part of the process of being genuinely interested. You know, how 
how have you got to be where you are? What is the situational analysis and how do we get out of that? Now that does in a lot of sales, particularly major accounts, larger ticket item sales require a certain amount of intelligence and it requires a certain amount of ability to build rapport and empathy. Uh, you have to be careful of a prospect saying, you know, what business is this of yours? Why, why are you asking these questions? So again, we all know in sales that to qualify, you ask questions, um, but it requires sometimes diplomacy, empathy and intelligence to do that. Beyond that, the next thing and probably the thing that I sometimes think sets successful people apart from less successful salespeople is perseverance. And it's amazing how many people see sales objections as an objection when often they are not. They are just a way of formulating thoughts as to how something can be implemented or how it can be presented internally to colleagues. And people, you know, if they can't reach somebody or they get a voicemail for the fifth time, you know, they move on to other things. And actually, um, I unashamedly call people, email, chase people until they say, no, thank you. That's all they have to do is say, no, thank you. And then I'll go somewhere else. But until then, I firmly believe that I have their best interests at heart and um, a solution that will aid the quality of their, their 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 business, their life, whatever. That's brilliant. Thanks, John. Um, would you say that the, the, are there are there things that you've learned not to do over the years in sales? There is a fine line between that perseverance and being an absolute pain in the proverbial. Um, but and we've all seen foot in the door salesmen and women probably less so nowadays, but people who just will not take no for an answer, well, that's that that doesn't win anybody any friends or, or get business, and it can only cause hostility, which I don't see the point of that. Um, I'm having an issue at the moment with a company, who I guess I shouldn't name, who don't understand that at the moment I've moved house uh, and I don't have the ability to take... Um, satellite television and I've said this to them at least six times now and I guarantee that if not today then tomorrow I will get another call from somebody else inviting me to take satellite TV at an even lower price than they offered me last week and I can't physically do it and they're just not listening and that just annoys me and and having had that company's product for about 15 years um, they are really starting to um, What's the word that I can politely put on a film? <laughs> Upset me. Um, so certainly, you know, going, just not taking no or a logical no for an answer is certainly something that I think, no, stop it. There should be enough fish in the sea that you can find another one to go and catch. Um, what else? Um, I would say it's back to the perseverance thing. I've learned just not to give up, just keep going. And you can, you think, oh, this is a waste of time. Oh, they haven't picked up for the last 50 times. They never answer, they never answer. And then one day, and it might not be this week, it might not be next month. It, it can actually be a year later. They will come back to you and they say, you know, they remember you because of the way that you uh, presented your proposition and they will come back. And at that time, it's right for them. And hey, presto, off we go. Yeah. That's great. Well, thanks. And um, can you tell me a bit about the knowledge that you that you have that supports your success and how you came by it? In IT terms, in software, um, I would say that I had a very firm foundation. Um, people watching this film will probably think, well, there's a dinosaur. But I started out as a COBOL programmer, um, <laughs> which you might think is obsolete, but it's frightening when you know how many banks and big companies are still running the services and the infrastructure that we rely on, on COBOL programs. But I started out as a COBOL programmer and really what that taught me for the first time was the unassailable logic of a computer and following logic in, in what you're doing 
I then became a systems analyst and you start to see the bigger picture and how things flow and how they interact and from there a project manager and a systems manager and at that stage I started to buy um, systems from suppliers and indeed you mentioned I, I went into sales with Olivetti uh, Olivetti were one of four companies at the time that I was evaluating for um, a system for my then employer uh, and I didn't actually choose the Olivetti solution, but um, they were one of three who offered me a job and, and I jumped at, at what I saw as a far more um, rewarding, um, interesting and exciting life. So I think in IT terms and software, and although the things that we do nowadays with the advent of the cloud and Kubernetes and the way that things are developed and, and, and maintained, it has changed an awful lot, but in other ways, it's still fundamentally the same thing. Um, and the cloud, which everybody talks about, which we all know is not really a cloud, it's just somebody else's server somewhere else in the world, is actually broadly analogous to time sharing, which is what we did back in the early 70s when nobody had any memory on their terminal they just went off somewhere else so it, it's kind of strange that we've come so far and yet not even moved an inch um in terms of the broader non-it sales and i have a broad experience across across fast moving consumer goods across utility products and whatever i would say it's experience of life Clive. you know it's the university of life it, it's meeting people it's finding people interesting it's understanding their challenges and and back to the same probably hammering the same drum really just helping them that's cool that's a really good answer too this might become a bit repetitive but but see if you can find some some additional <laughs> wisdom in there um so what talents skills and methods do you consider important in the to success in selling um okay i will say perseverance again um at the risk of repeating myself but persevering with the same answer uh resilience so don't take it personally don't take the non-answer don't take the no for an answer keep going until they say categorically no thank you um i would say intelligence is useful you know don't keep um flogging something that's that's not going anywhere good sense of humor uh, being able to build rapport empathy um yeah okay there's always a risk it's going to get a little bit uh, <laughs> i gave you too much too soon that's the problem yeah, no, no that's the problem it's really it was really good so um which aspects are strengths for you and which do you wish you were better at as I say, I enjoy the, the questioning. I like asking questions, and I generally seem able to quickly engage in that conversation, which isn't just following a script or, you know, have you got this, did you do that? It's really understanding, well, hang on, why have you done that? Are you, were you part of that decision? Uh, who else might be involved in this? How big a journey is it? I mean, do you at least agree with us? How, and then working together to strategize. I think I'm very good at that um i'm not so good at time management um that's always a challenge um i would kind of defend it by you know if you want something doing ask a busy person but um always the time available uh, what's the expression the time available um is is not quite equal uh, work, to the time required yeah work expands to fill the time available for it that's right yes that's, law. that's the one um and I can go back to my school and, and university, you know, give me a year to do a project and I will start it with three days to go and, <laughs> and, 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 and submit it and generally pass, not with distinction perhaps, I might have possibly been able to do a better job. But So time management, um, preparation often, um, again, part of being interested is to at least research the company and find out what challenges and yeah. what did the um chairman say in the last financial report that that may actually cascade down into something which is broadly analogous with the direction that you're taking with the product or service um but generally um yeah time management preparation it's those kind of things where there isn't an immediate deadline um i tend to need deadlines to deliver 
Oh, okay, that's a good answer. And that's a, a frustration. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, aligned with that one. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, so finally, last question then. Can you tell me about the um, the character traits and qualities that you consider important factors contributing to a salesperson's success? Um, I've mentioned some of them. I won't repeat. Well, I'll repeat sort of intelligence, perseverance, questioning. I think humility is a big one. Um, we don't always have, well, we, we never have all the answers. Um, and often things take a different turn. And one of the things which I find really um, sad sometimes is often new sales people or people who are not very successful insisting that, that their way or no way or, or this is the route or whatever. And there's an awful lot of humility, I think, in, in successful sales. Understanding that five different people have five different perspectives, climbing into their skin, looking at the world through their eyes. Um, you know when we're doing sales training or training or developing people within our organization, we talk about personality traits and how you can, can match really uh, in the way that you communicate and also the way in which they think and the, the triggers that they have. So um, I think a lot of that is absolutely critical in successful sales. Um, and that takes, again, intelligence and, and thought and preparation and a certain humility because we all like to think, oh, yeah, we've got this. We know, we know the answer. We know the way. And actually, we don't. And even if you do, people tend not to like to be told. They like to come on the journey with you. And that's back to questioning, coaching, um, and, and bringing people along on a journey, which, you know, hopefully, if we do it well, they not only think that it was their idea, um, it probably was their idea. All we've done is create the environment in which they came up with the right answer, if you, if you put it that way. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I'm trying to think of, um, of good salespeople that I know. It, 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 it is. It's intelligence, it's humility, it's humor, and it's, um, it's building whatever destination we define together very often. That's fantastic, John. This has been a really interesting hour. I'll look at the recording. Obviously, I'll send you a copy of it uh, or give you a link to look at it. Uh, but I think this would be really valuable to share with other people. And what I hope to do is do that via my social media and uh, via the website. But I'll wait your feedback before I do that, of course. Okay. Well, so thank you, anything to add? Just, just thanks very much. This has been brilliant. Okay. Well, um, yeah, I mean, you know all this, of course. I mean, I've learned a lot from you over the years. So uh, so it's a bit rich you asking me these questions, but hopefully it fits in with what you expected. And um, I'd be interested not only to see this recording, but also what you've seen from others, because every day is a school day. We can always learn. Oh, that's a great, that's a great phrase, that is. Every day is a school day. That's a brilliant place to end. Thank you, John. <laughs> Thank you, Clive. Speak to you again soon. Thank you. All the best. Bye-bye. Yeah.